everyone. Welcome to another Power Talk with Archana. I have a very special guest with me today, Ms. Veshali Nigam Sinha. Veshali is the Chief Sustainability CSR and Communication Officer at Renew Power, India's leading renewable energy company. She's the founding chair of Renew Foundation, a keen advocate of climate action, sustainable development, and gender parity. Veshali is striving to create a social economic order characterized by deeper environmental consciousness and more empowered women. She chairs the UN Global Compact Network India's Gender Committee. Ms. Sinha is the chair of South Asian Women in Energy, a body set up under US India Strategic Forum to promote diversity and gender equity in energy sector. She also chairs Confederation of Indian Industry Women Network. She's the member of Advisory Council India Climate Collaborative. Ms. Sinha serves on the President's Advisory Council at Wellesley College. She's also on the Advisory Board of Columbia Global Centre, Mumbai. Let's meet Asia's most influential women in renewable energy. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you doing today? Good. Hi, Archana, and thank you for that glorious uh, introduction. Pleasure is all mine, ma'am. We are very delighted to have you with us. So as we start this journey with you today, we would like to start with, begin with the Gender Equality Summit. Your vision to bring the best of corporate minds to work in tandem with one another, explore synergies that are more effective, you know, thereby creating an ecosystem for women to thrive. We have definitely come a long way. From a decade of action, to COVID and gender equations, adversity and opportunity being the topic of discussion today. So ma'am, this indeed is the fourth edition of GES. What can we really look forward to in this summit? Yeah, great. Um, no, absolutely. That's a very good question, uh, especially in light of the fact that, uh, you know, we are coming out of a very difficult year. And uh, the other problem is that in this difficult year, there have been lots of conferences, lots of discussions. There's a bit of fatigue which is setting in. And so it's important that uh, whatever we do, uh, we do it thoughtfully. We do it uh, purposefully. And uh, we engage people and we're able to have an impact. Uh, for me, as long as we can get important stakeholders, uh, and when I say important, it doesn't mean powerful. It means even the youngsters, the young students, the youth, the boys and uh, in the corporate sector, CSOs, all of them who attend this event to go back even with a little bit of a trigger, I think uh, uh, that would have been uh, a task well uh, done. So, um, so yeah, we're really excited about the summit. Uh, you know, the summit is a little bit solemn because um, you know, we, uh, the, the, you know, Kamalji, who was associated with this is no longer with us, but the team has done an amazing job. So we are really looking forward to it. And, um, you know, I think we need to look at uh, the criticality of what's going on during these times, you know, in the COVID uh, times, uh, women have really had a difficult time more so than any other um, you know, set of individuals. So uh, professional women, women in rural India, women who are uh, you know, informal workers, um, you know, women who've actually had a job and women who've not had a job. Both sets of people have, ha have, have had to struggle. You know, frontliners have mostly been women as we all know, and they've really had to go through a lot of mental stress. So we've looked at a lot of the issues and then there's an issue around women have had to work, not only from home, but for home as well, right? Yeah. So that's been pretty demanding on them as far as, again, just, you know, obviously takes a toll. Uh, we want to also understand uh, how this has had an impact. What is it that we can learn from here? And how is it that we can do things a little bit differently as we move into a post-COVID green recovery, right? Um, so, you know, I think it's important to also look at some statistics. Because if you look at some of the st statistics, you know, whether it is the UN report uh, uh, by UN women, which shows that, uh, you know, this pandemic is going to push 96 million people into extreme poverty this year, yeah. right? 47 million of, of whom are going to be women and girls. Women. Yeah. 
So I do believe that, you know, if we can have any impact, you know, with respect to getting policies mobilized, getting corporates mobilized to, uh, to think about these issues and address them uh, in a very pointed way is I think that would be mission uh, well accomplished. And to do that, we need to engage the right set of leaders, whether it is, you know, business women, uh, men, not only women, also men, uh, policy yeah. makers, both men and women, participants, both men and women, who also understand what is it that we're trying to do and what is it that they can do. Because, you know, we, I always tell everybody that it's not about what is it that can be done for me. The question is, what is it that we can do for ourselves? Absolutely. So I need people to come and attend and have a voice and make their voice heard at this event. I think that's a very important part. Um, and, you know, the numbers are pretty gruesome. I mean, you know, in India, I mean, you look at 90% of India's working, working women are involved in the informal sector. They've been affected in a big way. The worst is that women who've stayed at home have been subjected to, and this is the saddest part, to domestic violence and, you know, mental sort of, um, you know, I would say torture, et cetera. And we need to figure out going forward uh, this is not the lone uh, and sole pandemic. So if this were to reoccur, how can we prepare ourselves to deal with it more effectively, right? So I think uh, these are some of the things we need to keep in mind. Also, the competition for everybody in a post-pandemic world is going to be very, uh, very much. So women uh, often get left behind because, you know, it's the survival of the fittest. And uh, as we know, uh, that women do a lot of unpaid work. So they have yeah. to do at home, for home, and go to work. And it's going to be tough out there. But you know what? There's a misconception that work from home is really going to be a huge convenience. Honestly, yeah. I'm not 100% sure what impact it's going to have on the job security. So I'd like to uh, sort of flag this to all the women who are listening to this, that let's be on top of things. Let's just go back, charged, motivated, and, uh, you know, fight for a spot um, at the workplace, which we are all very, uh, you know, trying very hard to secure, right? And so much will have to be done by us. Uh, so I yeah. think just honest to discussion, I think just brainstorming, engaging leadership, um, you know, getting, you know, stakeholders from different sectors, technology, social media, government, getting people from all these segments to come together and kind of chart a systematic ecosystem which is going to work for women, right? Uh, and, and so hopefully with that counsel and mentorship and guidance, uh, it's going to help them to think and rethink about what they're going to do in the future over the next few months, how are they going to do it? And more importantly, have some fun. Just uh, yeah. so we it interesting also we're still working on it but uh, I think that's something we you know we are so involved in just very serious conversations I hope that we can have participate uh, participants who can also unleash the sort of the lighter side of who all of us are so that um, yeah we can all connect you know connecting virtually is difficult but I hope that uh, all of this will make for a great conference um, for the participants Indeed, indeed. Very well said, ma'am. I'm sure under your leadership, we are definitely going to meet the agenda of the summit. Thank you so much for this. Great. So, ma'am, you know, I mean, we, we really see there is a lot happening on this front. There is a kind of a marathon to bridge this gap, but it's still work in progress. Although everyone is doing their bit to make India a land of equal opportunities, equal social status for both men and women. But then where do you see that blind spot? What is really happening? Right. So definitely, I don't think anybody can deny that today there's a lot of buzz and awareness around gender parity. I always define it as like, it's a wallpaper. What's, what's behind it? Is it a solid wall or is it a crumbling wall? And yeah. so it can create a bit of a misconception and we all feel that we're doing so much and there's you know, a lot of policies and a lot of talk, but 
what is the impact? Actually, numbers don't really align with that, you know, so numbers go are going in a different way and the talk is going in a different way. And that's what bothers me. And that's the mission, I guess, one has to try and see how can we measure the outcome of the initiatives, yeah. right? What are the metrics. Let's talk about the metrics, right? So yeah. I think, uh, of course, awareness is good, but definitely let me not sound a little bit negative or pessimistic. I really do feel that if we look, go back and look at, uh, you know, how uh, women were positioned at the workplace, um, you know, maybe a couple of decades ago versus now, um, you know, there's been a huge difference. And so definitely we have to acknowledge that. We have to acknowledge this greater sensitization. I think the UN SDGs, SDG 5, uh, have um, uh, just, uh, you know, accelerated um, the sensitization and the commitment of various stakeholders. Yeah. Yeah. They've connected the global commitment with national level commitment, with state, ground, district level. So I think there is that sensitization and everybody is working towards meeting the goals. And I think that's the one good thing which I see. I think also we are very fortunate, Darshina, that we are in a country where our leadership is really committed to a lot of the SDGs, you know, be it climate, be it, you know, um, you know, safety, environment, uh, you know, and uh, gender inclusiveness. Uh, there's a lot of prioritization. There's a lot of responsibility. And there is a lot of uh, voices out there which uh, are resonating with people like you and me who want to ensure that there is acceleration of the SDGs for us to meet our goals. So our Prime Minister is a great advocate, as you know, uh, also the Child Development Minister, uh, Sri Smriti Rani has been executing plans, not only talking, but implementing plans. So we've had an, uh, a bunch of schemes, you know, which have really worked well. So, you know, one of them is the National Nutrition Mission, Ujwala Scheme, Pradhan Mantri's Ujwala Scheme, uh, Yojana, uh, Beti Bachao, Beti Parhao, um, you know, so all of these things are, they add, you know, they add to the yeah. goals and the objectives we have. So I think capacity building training is important. And, uh, you know, we have different requirements, you know, in the urban, um, you know, uh, situation and different in the rural, you know, rural, um, uh, you know, area, the women are very capable, very yeah. driven. Uh, but they do need, um, because the ecosystem is not supportive, so if you're doing a capacity building program, we've seen in the work we do, it has to be well-timed. You know, we have to give them that support and, you know, facilities for them to be able to attend the program. It has to be yeah. done at a time where they can attend. We really need to, uh, you know, customize some of uh, the initiatives and just not make generic initiatives. So that's for sure, because, you know, we've seen in other parts of the world, when right policy understand the situation, um, make policies and have an implementation plan, it works. Yes. You know, uh, it works and you can see that women get engaged. You can see men get engaged. You can see families get engaged. There's a support system. Uh, you know, the VCs, the funders, uh, you know, all of them get engaged to and, and, and get incentivized because they see that when, when women get involved and when women are supportive, it adds to the bottom line. It's it, it adds to the GDP of countries and nations and economies. We've seen during COVID times that women have led uh, well. You know, I don't want to compare. I just want to say they've uh, led well and they have led in an exemplary fashion, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, clearly, I think there is a recognition that there's huge amount of untapped value out there, which we really need to, uh, you know, ec uh, extract from uh, the system, which is lying latent. And so it's going to be only smart for us to do a few things. So what is it that we can do to catalyze this journey towards gender parity? One is, you know, gender budgeting, right? Yeah. We still see less than 1% of our GDP on women's development. This is really minuscule, right? So um, we need to also, once we spend, but we also have to be outcome driven. So that's also important. Then as I talked about skilling capacity building, it's essential that we provide this training. So technology, it's a pity to see that uh, tech is going to be anchoring the future of the workplace. And if you look at some of the surveys, right, which have uh, been done, it shows that women are not as tech savvy as they could be. So we really need to work there. Otherwise they'll get left behind, right? The fourth industrial revolution, 
it's all about technology savviness and we are living in a world where the boundaries between global sort of you know between in countries boundaries it's all becoming blurred so similarly why should there be a boundary within countries why should there True. be such divide between uh, you know what we are doing in urban cities and rural india Love. so with language with communication and with technology and education some support we can make a huge impact right uh, and so that is an area we need to and then you know the private sector i see you know i work a lot with uh you know partners stakeholders who really want to have an impact whether it is women in entrepreneurship in rural india whether it is women in stem whether it is women in entrepreneurship generally speaking they want to be able to fund women driven projects yeah. um uh, yeah but um, you know so we need to be able to ensure that uh, there is a connect right so women and uh, who are doing these projects sometimes women tend to be less assertive women tend to be less out there because that's the way we are raised often right we are raised to be good girls not to raise your voice not to push hard and so sometimes that's not bad i'm not i mean that's fine and, and i think boys and girls and all human beings should be well uh, you know well behaved and well mannered and there's nothing wrong with that but when it comes to work you need to understand to get things done you need to be assertive you need to be aggressive you need to be confident believe in yourself first so that others will believe in you correct so we need to have this value system actually ingrained in um, you know the parents as well and the children so that when they are uh, when we are raising children uh, both boys and girls get sensitized to this so that we are raising more self believing self confident uh generation of young dynamic women and so i also want to urge the communities which is financing the vc community and the private equity community etc that it's important that they have women uh in their teams because i have seen once you have women whether in corporates whether in the government in leadership uh it matters it has an impact right because um, and 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 so it's i want to see more women supporting other women um there are two sides of the coin but i'm not going to talk about the other side of the coin but i really do want to say that women in leadership positions uh um have a uh, make a difference and we've seen that as we've had women join boards etc in india inc um you know just uh, there has been more sensitization there has been people have realized that um Uh, they come in they perform they are committed they get things done they are empathetic all qualities which our top notch ceo should be having for yeah. hr or uh, sort of uh, papers etc so um so yeah that is true and then we need role models i think that's the other part which is very important so true. once a woman prime minister everybody in india does believe that they can become the prime and everybody meaning a lot of girls young girls believe that they could become uh, the prime minister of a country in other parts of the world that is not the case in the most progressive countries that was not the case till recently so um similarly when women see women entrepreneurs they believe they can also make billions and not just million dollar deals billion dollar deals right when you see successful entrepreneurs being recognized in india at the national level you know that you can do it you know and if you don't see them you don't necessarily believe that it's possible so i think uh, role models play an important role and i'd like to just tweak this a little bit but when we talk about rural india let's not intimidate women in rural india because when you you need to connect with them in a way they feel confident because women yeah. in rural india are super confident super super uh self believers right yeah. and so if you connect with them so if they see women who walk talk and understand their culture and their values they can create magic together and 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 we have seen it in some of the projects and we have seen the confidence you can put them anywhere and they'll shine so let's let's understand the cultural differences nuances and make local initiatives for women in different parts of our country so that they can succeed and become a part of the 5 trillion dollar economy we are aspiring for here in india lovely what a beautiful sketch note for all of us to follow for the civil society the ngos and the social reformers to follow 
And we really, you know, hear that passion and determination and the dedication in your voice, ma'am, then the consistency with your vision that you have. I'm sure you have built a humongous team to facilitate the agenda and focus. We really congratulate you for the thought process you carry to make this, you know, take shape. Really amazing. Ma'am, tell me one thing, the youth of India or the youth across globe for that matter, they really have a voice. And we really see that they are standing by this cause of gender equality and actively participate on different forums, you know. And we feel that they can really give a momentum in scaling up the efforts in this critical area of gender equality. What are your advice message to them, you know, to take this forum at a level when this can be heard and, you know, come into practice? No, I think that's a very good point. And I did refer to it in my uh, comments earlier that, uh, you know, how uh, definitely we're living in a world where I'm learning a lot. I have two kids, um, you know, a son and a daughter. And my daughter just finished college. She makes sure that whoever she interacts with understands that she means business with respect to, um, you know, uh, what she aspires for, right? And what she expects and how she expects to be uh, treated, um, you know, because there is an, a lot of inherent uh, condescending attitude towards um, young women because there's certain expectations of them once they grow yeah. up. It's, and that's that's fine, as we should have of boys and girls. It should be yeah. both ways. Uh, yeah. Because you know, girls work so hard to get where they do, and then suddenly the course changes, right? But I'm glad to see that the youngsters of today are well-rounded and they respect, uh, you know, um, inclusiveness and they want, uh, you know, they want partners who are independent and self-reliant and they take great pride in, in, in associating with uh, uh, groups who, who think that way. And I see this around the world and in India as well. So that's fantastic. But India is a big country. India is a diverse country. And so if we can, uh, we can do a lot more so that there is more parity and there's more equity. Uh, I think it will definitely help the young generation see. So we, I can keep, I can see a lot of things on this conversation. But what really uh, is important is that we have to make sure they see it in their immediate ecosystem. So if I want my son to respect his partner, friend, spouse, whoever, uh, he needs to see it happening in his house. And if it does, you don't have to say much, right? Um, so that I believe is extremely important that we as adults, uh, we as leaders in terms of the government, various business leaders, we have to change the narrative of how we behave how we interact, how we engage. And automatically the young generation is going to latch on. Um, so I think that is uh, definitely an important way to walk the talk, right? And uh, once we do that, I think we will definitely engage um, our youth. Uh, and uh, the mindset change has happened. I think, um, you know, all I want to say is that not only should women be more uh, assertive, but uh, I'd like young men to be uh, more sensitive, more uh, respectful, uh, more encouraging, because you know what, this uh, journey towards um, parity cannot be a lone, lone journey by women alone. So when yeah. boys and girls, men and women uh, walk shoulder to shoulder, it's going to be fun, not otherwise. Yes. yes. Absolutely lovely. Ma'am, uh, coming back to the Gender Equality Summit, it falls on the day after the International Women's Day. Your message to your women across the globe. Just be yourself. Just be yourself and just don't give up. Because if you do, then don't expect others to believe in you. So I, I, I do follow that as a, as a thumb rule that quietly in a very determined way. We should not only work for ourselves, but uh, for those around us and for the next generation, we owe it to them. Lovely. Great. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks a lot for gracing our show. Absolute pleasure to have you with us. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful life. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, take care, Arshana. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you.